total hit. Welcome back to the channel everyone. A lot of things going on behind the scenes. We're gonna dive right into this review, but before we do, I'm gonna be a little cryptic about what's going on, but to be the first to know, you have to follow my off-topic Instagram page. That's where we're gonna announce it first. So, go to at NFA underscore review underscore off-topic. Go ahead, check out that page follow it, we're going to change that name. So we're gonna rebrand that page when we're ready to announce, well, what we're gonna be doing. Don't wanna give you too many details. Uh, another thing I wanna talk about before we get started today is Patreon. You guys have been killing it on there. We're almost to the 200 patron goal. We're gonna have that private range day set aside for you guys, and you guys have been really taking advantage of the 50% off pro deal. So uh, that's for you, thank you for that or you're welcome, I guess you could say, and thanks for helping the operating cost on the NFA Review Channel. Let's go ahead and dive into why you're here today, and that is to check out the CGS Group Mod 9 SK. Of course, you've already seen the uh, full-size Kraken 9 and the little Kraken 9 SK, and we just reviewed the new and improved Mod 9 full-size, so why not do the SK version. So this is a little bit improved over the Kraken series. They are backwards compatible. We're gonna dive right into it right now. So it comes in a uh, SKB case, an I series. As usual with the uh, CGS Group products, O-ring contained box, perfect for storing cigars later, keys, whatever you want if you're on a boat. Pretty cool. Um, of course it's gonna come with a takedown tool. We'll set that aside for later and you have the little tiny CGS Group uh, Mod 9 SK. I'm trying everything not to call it a Kraken. If I screw up today, I apologize. I'll try to cut it out. Uh, but this is an improvement over the Kraken, and again, backwards compatible. With the specs right off the bat, she comes in in an overall length of 4.8 inches, and that is compared to the 7.7 .7 inches of the full-size Mod 9. As far as the diameter, of course, nothing has changed there, 1.37 inches, and the weight is 6.6 .6 ounces compared to the full sizes, 10 ounces even. So I got a 3.4 ounce uh, weight, uh, weight savings there, which is actually pretty noticeable when it's hanging off the end of a gun. As far as the materials here, the tube is 7075 T6 aluminum, and then the booster assembly in the rear is 17.4 heat treated stainless steel as well as the piston and the blast baffle. Uh, the front cap is 7075 T6 aluminum and the subsequent baffles after the blast baffle are also 7075 T6 aluminum with a type 3 hard coat anodizing. Now that we got all the specifications out of the way, let's dig into what makes us different over the normal Kraken SK that was discontinued. First thing a lot of you that are uh, astute to suppressors are going to notice is the lack of ser the serial number and model designation on the tube wall. And uh, thankfully the ATF has been signing off on this a lot over the last couple of years. Companies have been jumping on board. Um, no longer do you have to engrave the details on the tube. Why is this important if you're new to suppressors? If you have a catastrophic failure and a baffle strike and that bullet exits out of the side of the tube, you just lost a nine to one year, a nine month to one year wait and a $200 tax stamp. So uh, protecting that serial number is paramount. So what they did is they moved it from here to the booster assembly. Again, 17.4 heat treated stainless steel. When the gun is threaded on the end of this, there is no way that bullet will deviate out of that stainless steel area in the piston. In fact, the piston ends right here, right where the tube begins. So if anything happens and this blows off the front, send in your suppressor to CGS Group, they will repair it and you will not be without a can or tax stamp. All right, moving forward, I mentioned it at the start of the video, 100% backwards compatible with the Kraken. So you have uh, their pistons, their fixed spacer, 
and the three lug you can all use on the Mod 9 and the Kraken line. So if you already have maybe, you know, if you were one of the early adopters and you got a full size Kraken and now you're on Patreon and you want half off on another one and you want a uh, Mod 9 SK, then no worries, you can use the parts across the line. So now let's go ahead and take it apart. Again, as with all of the CGS group, uh, Mod 9 line, this is a toolless takedown on the rear for easy uh, changing of pistons and mounts in the field. You, you really don't need to remove the front cap at the field. You're not going to be servicing and maintaining it in the field. So they made it easy. Just kind of turn your hand into a little claw shape here, twist it till it's loose, and then the uh, rear cap, the booster spring, and the piston, which we'll talk about here in just a second, all come out. Okay, and then you're left with the end of that and the body. Take your takedown tool, insert it into the corresponding holes in the front cap, loosen it, and you should just be able to finish the rest with your finger there. Uh, you know, while we are discussing this, bring your takedown tool in the field and every couple mags just give that front cap a little snug just to make sure during the different expanding rates of all the different metals in here uh, it doesn't loosen. So go ahead and remove your front cap and you have one baffle, two baffles that are 70, 75 T6 aluminum and then you have your 17, um, 17 4 heat treated stainless steel baffle. So you have this is three baffle suppressor and then you're just left with the tube. Uh, very lightweight, and like all of the Kraken line, again, all of the weight when this is on the gun is towards the rear, towards the muzzle. That's, that's why these cans, I mean, even at 10 ounces for the full size, uh, that's why they don't feel heavy on the gun, because you have all the heavy materials towards the rear, okay? This tube is light. So you have the stainless steel from the booster, the stainless steel from that first uh, baffle, and then you have your stainless steel from the piston and then your rear cap. So um, a lot of weight in the back. Now let's circle back before we discuss maintenance here to the piston. So they actually changed the cuts, the design of the pistons themselves. And this is what changed the sound signature and improved it so there was no first round pop. So your first shot your subsequent shots all sound the same. We heard that here on the channel a couple videos ago with the full size Mod 9. So pretty cool, they've been tweaking this. They haven't been resting on their laurels. They've been continuing to improve their product line. While we're on the piston, of course, I wanna mention that this does have, it is clockable for point of impact shift tuning uh, to 12 different points. I'll demonstrate that here in just a minute. Grab a gun off the wall. So. Let's just lay these out here. We'll get some nice pretty B-roll shots for you guys so you can kind of take a close-up personal look at what you're getting here with the Mod 9 SK. As far as maintenance, uh, just use a uh, cleaner, a degreaser for the two ball. Hit that with a brush. Uh, you shouldn't have any buildup here, okay, because these baffles are, are designed for 100% containment of uh, lead and carbon, so you shouldn't have an issue. But should you have some leakage, just knock it off the wall here, oil it up with some rim oil and dry it. And then of course you wanna keep your um, booster assembly clean. You see the uh, prongs here on the teeth of the booster. You can always use those to scrape off any carbon buildup and uh, as well as a gun brush, make sure that's clean and there's nothing in the way of the reciprocation of that piston. Once that's clean, you can knock off the big chunks off the baffles. Uh, the aluminum is not ultrasonic cleaner safe. It will cavitate uh, over time. Uh, you can throw in the first baffle, but I mean, at this point, just knock off the big stuff with the brush. It's not rocket science. It doesn't need to be squeaky clean. Um, for reassembly, you wanna line up all the notches. And I'll, again, I'll show you a nice close up here. Um, these baffles do encapsulate 100% all the crap so it doesn't stick to the inside of the tube ball. So they just fit onto each other. Put that down here on the bench. And then we'll put on the uh, blast baffle on top. Turn it over. And then I, I like to always line it up exactly the same. So you, I'm gonna line up the notch with the SK. 
So this way we know our baffle orientation is always the same when we, when we tune it okay, for a point of impact shift changes. Once that's in there, you can go ahead and throw on your front cap and then grab your takedown tool and you want to compress the stack into itself nice and tight. Looks good. Uh, now we'll go ahead and install the spring and the rear cap. Now if you are shooting this on a MP5, say with a three lug, again, this is going to come out, you can put the three lug in here. If you're shooting this on a fixed uh, barrel like a 9mm carbine, piston come, or the uh, spring comes off, your fixed spacer goes on, like so, you would put a fixed spacer here, put that on, and then reinstall it. You do not want this thing jackhammering back and forth. If you have no idea what I'm talking about right now and you just tuned in and this is one of the first videos you watched or you're new to suppressors, watch my video, uh, everything you need to know about suppressors or maybe I labeled it silencers. It doesn't matter. Actually, I talk about the interchangeability of that word in the video. So go to my channel, click search videos, type in everything you need to know about silencers and you'll find it. Go ahead and watch that now. I believe that about covers it. Um, before we hit the range, let's just grab, uh, let's grab this Glock 19X, cool gun. Let's see, uh, take off the older Kraken SK, weapons clear, and we'll throw on the new Mod 9 SK. Again, holding it in my hand, feels really good. Uh, all, all the weight is towards the rear, towards your hands, uh, because of all that heavier metal here at the beginning of the can. Um, and as far as clocking it, again, this is another good reason to always line it up uh, the same, because now when you orientate it, uh, you can pick a location on here, like the SK. Shoot a group, pull forward, lock next location. Shoot a group, pull forward, shoot in the next uh, spot on the clockable piston. Uh, once you do this uh, 12 times, you'll know exactly where it needs to be orientated uh, so you have less to little uh, point of impact shift when you add the suppressor to your host gun. I uh, believe that pretty much covers it today. As far as the price on this, the retail price from CGS Group is $7.15, so my patrons only pay $3.75, so pretty awesome. Uh, killer price on there, almost the same price as a tag stamp for a suppressor built with pretty high-end materials and uh, backed by a really awesome company. So let's grab a couple hosts, maybe a new one that you haven't seen on here in a while, and head to the range and really put this thing to the ringer. I really want to beat the hell out of it, see what it can do, see what it sounds. Uh, we might even shoot it wet just to see the wet performance as well. So uh, let's go ahead and get going. Kyle's ears were not on yet. Yeah, 100%. It's like weird. Like, it sounds louder down there for sure because it's a smaller can. Was that dry? Yeah. Ish? Yeah, it was dry ish. Yeah. Had some oil and shit in there, but you can hear it, you know, change. All right. So we put the fixed barrel spacer in, and I have never shot a CGS Group SK can on a 300 blackout, so this is all new for me. Can shot dry. Nice. Oh, cool, it's very, uh, very deep tone. Yeah, it is deep. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, it does. So, 
this would be perfect for like a woods walk, right? With like a kid. Absolutely. Like your, you know, 12 year old could probably handle this. It's not too heavy in the woods. That's perfect, man. Stop at B5. Still, like, the sound's still bad. It's, it's, it's projecting all that, you know? All right, let's dump this wheel. Like, oh. literally, literally dumped this wow. wheel. Wow. She gone. Oh, she gone. And So, could you explain to us what we're doing right now? <laughs> God damn it. it! Show it! What'd you do? Alright, how do we get this thing to pan down? Not working. Yep, that just happened. Thanks, Adam. Great filming location. Oh, one more time. What were you saying before you stepped in a big pile? Uh, oh, yeah. I just said so, a big pile of pow shit. <laughs> big pile of pow shit. Alright, so. What you want to do right now is use the walk. Horse, use the worst gun possible. Okay, the 200 yard plus fence line. We and, have at our disposal what? Right. We got a frame, there we go. We shot the Glock 19, right? Yeah, 19. And then we shot the Ruger American 300 blackout, you know, with a scope on it. Yep, the Zev. And then we have the HK MP5 uh, from Serbu Firearms here. So, uh, out of all those. Out of all the guns, you know, the one with the scope and all, we choose this one because yeah America. and how far away We're from the yards you'll be able to show in a second yeah but you got the other camera rolling down there that's the what only rolling. about five yards away from where we're shooting yep camera's about five yards away from the line of fire okay um and that camera down range is at about 15 percent battery life so hmm. we have to hurry up before we lose so all in all we're, we're doing pretty good is what you're saying <laughs> amazing <laughs> we got 10 percent oh, phone battery phone battery five percent camera battery and oh, we're shooting yeah, that one's dying too. full auto mp5 9 mil rounds uh Bad. 200 something yards at the camera yeah and there's no clouds in the sky we're dying out here. So that's cool all right just making anyway, sure let's uh let's try this oh my god i can't even see the camera yeah at least you don't have cow all over your shoes yeah well i'm glad you drove <laughs> Got that? Uh, I mean, at the ear. No, it's not bad. This is no, it's not bad. Are you kidding me? Quiet as hell. It's like all that sound is projected. Yeah. Like pretty well. Why is that so fun? Like, why is that even a thing? I don't know, man, but this thing just, it's... It's so smooth. It, it really is, dude, for being, like you said, dude, old technology. Yeah. I mean... All right, so Kyle's ending thoughts. What do you think? About the K? About the can? Yeah. Oh, it's unreal. I... Yeah. It, it, when for you three baffles, it, it's... Is that all that's in that's here? That's all, three. So, I want to be 110% transparent. This wet... Even the slightest bit. Oh, amazing. Compared to the full size. Dry, you mean? Like as the full, right, compared to the full size dry. I think it I sounds can, better. I can't, I can. They're like I the same. I can't really tell the difference. Yeah. I mean. So if you're on a budget, what, what would you pick? So here's my thing. I like, don't think a budget has anything to do with it. I think that just this being so short, light, and compact, I mean, for the nightstand, like home defense, you know, mm -hmm. in the house. That's where I'm. I have the full size. That's my direction with the K. Right. Is, 
nightstand duty, take the edge off, do the job, take out the flash, right? Oh. And go and, to town. Yeah, absolutely. Miles out here with me. He's actually a patron on Patreon. You saw the message on there. Well, I had a patron ask me a couple days ago when I was going to come out and film this review if I would bring the full size with me. I saw the message in time, threw the suppressor in my gear bag, and Kyle has the Mod 9 SK on a Glock 19X, so same length barrel, everything's the same. And then I have the full size Mod 9 on the OZ9. Both shooting uh, LEX 147. We're doing one and one? Uh, Let's do like five, one and one, and then dump and dump? Yeah, 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 sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll shoot this one. Sure. Let's do that again and add like one drop of your Kyle's Mountain or uh, was it Monster? <laughs> yeah, my Monster. I always said Mountain Dew, man. You're not gonna get enough my credit. Monster, a blade of grease. <laughs> yeah. All right, this will be the shooting wet. This is gonna be the Monster, or a blade of grease. All right, we we added about three cc's of Monster. Let's see what we got. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's right there. From my point of view, it, it's pretty this is quiet. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're right on. Because right. But All right, let's do a steal. All right. Wow, we both missed that. All right. And cut. Did you hear the shell casing? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was quiet. I'm gonna shoot that Dude, wood. This is... That wood. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can, can hear it. Hit the wood. Yep. Shoot again. Dump a couple. Do a couple. That's, I mean, for like nightstand use, and then like, hey, I want to press some friends in the backyard or plank the backyard, add a little bit of water so and or monster. So what's the retail difference between this and the full size? I think they're pretty close. I mean, All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video so far. It definitely took a while to get through everything, but I believe we portrayed the can as it is in person. Uh, so Kyle's out here today helping me film. Uh, let's see, we did unsuppressed and suppressed on a Glock 19 size platform, mm -hmm. uh, 300 blackout. Mm -hmm and the mp5 yeah. so i was asked to do a 300 blackout on patreon and we brought it out here so we shot the lax 147s pretty much all day that's what we yeah. used uh functioned great sounded great and it wasn't weak you know you can see it still just bam bam mm -hmm. slamming that uh uh clay uh what were your thoughts on it um if you had to pick this for a job to do in your safe what would it be this this is going to be it's going to be when I buy it. Um, I have the full size Mod 9. I'm definitely going to get the SK, and this is going to be my nightstand can gun. I mean, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we ran it wet, mm -hmm. the slightest bit wet, I immediately noticed it's not a huge difference in sound, but I noticed how close it was to the full size version. When, yeah, shooting wet. I mean, yeah. dead on. It was dead and close. And then when we did the side by side, yeah. It was unreal. To me, being three feet away from you, the S my wet SK sounded right. a little bit on this quieter. It's oh it's ridiculously quiet on that. It's quiet, but it's just not like it's deep. It's tone. not it's not like Hollywood quiet, but like the sound profile, like this, right? Yeah, it adds to all that. Like no, like being here shooting it was not loud, but you can hear like the air pressure Projected. like downrange. Yeah. 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 While we're on this, actually, guys, um, you see this three lug. I'll show you a close up here of their three lug design. Give a big shout out to Josh for designing this because it's designed so the extra gas and carbon that would normally deposit on the inner wall of your booster housing assembly goes into your baffle stack instead. I cannot tell you how important that is. I have older cans out there and older three lugs from like AAC and stuff like that, Silencer Co. Their three lugs. While they work, they mount on the gun well, they allow that carbon to, to transfer to the inner side of the booster uh, wall. And what happens is when you go to shoot it on your pistol again and you try to slide your piston in, your piston gets caught up on all the carbon deposits that are in there. This negates that and shoves all that in the can, which is serviceable. Not that the booster housing is not serviceable, mm -hmm. but you got to sit there with like a 50 cal casing or a flathead screwdriver and snap all that carbon off. So. Just wanted to kind of mention that. Um, other than that, 
I got nothing else to add other than uh, they're a good deal on Patreon and they will be out at the shoot on November 9th. So make sure you don't miss that. Uh, they're probably gonna give away a handful of those anyway. So maybe you'll be one of the lucky ones. <laughs> so again, thanks for watching guys. Make sure to click that like and subscribe button. I got big news coming up here on the channel and uh, I don't wanna spill the beans yet, but it's gonna be pretty exciting. I wanna ask a favor of you guys uh, when the time is right. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to announce that news. So thanks again, see you next time.